Hi, my name is Brian Freestead. This is my game dev log update stream. Uh, I'm working on my game working title called Chrono Platformer. And uh, I'm working currently towards having a tech demo to, uh, to let other people play the game I've been working on so far this year. <clears throat> um, I was hoping to have it all wrapped up by today but uh, Friday night and then Saturday morning, I realized I had a couple of, of dilemmas, a couple of barriers that were blocking my progress from finishing this that needed to be resolved before the tech demo could be done. So the first one was that uh, Unity doesn't have a good way to handle um, serializing What's the word? Serializing scriptable object references. So, it, when we had the chest data here for the treasure chest in the main uh, sandbox scene here, so like we got the chrono box here and the treasure chest here, and they each have data associated with them. And, uh, well, this data was. not saving when I would close and reopen Unity because the contents would get serialized out to a data file, like a .dat file, and then when I read the .dat file back up, um, the way that it had stored the reference to the other scriptable objects, see how we have a list of scriptable objects, uh, tried to read those back up but they were not found and um, that would have persisted in the tech demo when you close the game and reopen it when it reads back up from persistent data it would just it would just fail so uh, I figured that was a must-have I'm pretty sure it's resolved now but hey I, I actually haven't done the thing where I close close down the project and reopen it but just based off of um, the way that the data looks now, I think it's good. So uh, let's look at the start of day data for the treasure chest. It looks like this. So um, it has the capacity in the contents and says two and three. What are the two and three? Well, I have this new thing called an overlord scene <laughs> it's kind of funny but it has a scriptable object reference mapper uh, game object in it which just has a way to reference this scriptable data here and this scriptable data is just a list of a list of the scriptable objects in the scene that have references to them in the persistent data and then the number is just the index so uh, 2 means that we have element 2, an Arius, and a 3 here, a Denarius. So there's an Arius and a Denarius in, uh, in the treasure chest. And when we click start, go over to the treasure chest, click that, you can see that's what's in there. That seems correct to me. Let's try actually closing this. And then reopening it. And normally upon doing this, everything would be broken in in all of the the files when trying to read it back up it would be a bunch of not referenceable stuff but this is all still in order and when we go here we've got the chest data in this 
Okay. And these might not be exactly what we expect them to be, but that's that's fine because when it reads them up. Look, if I I think if I can click this now, it loads up the correct data from the file. Cool, right? And this one too. If I click load data from current file there's three of them in there which there was before I didn't show that but that's right so that was the first dilemma and that took me yesterday and today to to get a proper solution for um, things always end up seeing seeming a lot easier once you have them done but I had to go get a I had to go get a JSON object library off of off the internet I found a github with uh, this thing here. This guy's name is uh, Matt Matt Schoen, and uh, it was, it's free software that this guy made in C sharp. It's got a JSON object that lets me manually build the objects rather than um, just doing whatever JSON utility wants me to do. So like. Uh, Unity has this thing built in where you just do JSON utility dot to JSON and then pass in an object and it will print return out a string. It's a JSON, but I needed to manually do it because rather than saving the contents, I wanted to save the appropriate IDs, and uh, there was no way to interject into the that um, into that operation, so. I just redefined the get data and, or, you know, re-implemented the get data and restore from data functions to use this JSON object, which I had to, I had to spend a while researching one that I could actually use, um, and did did what I wanted it to do, and then I build the contents up, like so. It's the reference IDs, and we get them all, and then we save them out. And then when we're reading them back up, we will parse them if they exist. Uh, the kinematic data doesn't have to do that. The defense data doesn't have to do that, but actually the player health data does have to do that. That was the other one that kept breaking because the player health data is based off of uh, death events and health update events and those would always be broken whenever it would load back up which is really frustrating <clears throat> so that was the first big dilemma that I had to go and resolve um, next once I did that I realized that the uh, the data associated with the player wasn't being saved anymore since I had moved the player from uh, from one scene to the main scene because I needed I needed it to be in the main scene so that the camera and stuff could follow it because you can't have stuff referenced across scenes so I I moved the dynamic player game object into the main scene and then that was all fine but the scene day manager, which we can see in, for example, the sandbox scene, we've got a scene day manager. This finds everything in here that has a an end of day handler and calls the appropriate calls the appropriate information. Um, there's no scene day manager in the main scene, and so the the player wasn't that wasn't working. And even if um, I did put one in there, it didn't work because uh, I don't know, exactly remember why. It's late, but it didn't work. You can just trust me. So what I ended up doing was I made a main scene which has things like the camera, the player, input system, the background, and its own scene day manager. Canvas and event system are also in here. And then I have this new concept called an overlord scene. And this just has what used to be called the main scene script. It will load up the main and the sandbox scene at the start. And uh, 
then the script of object reference mapper exists here. All right. So once I did that, then the all of the player's data was being saved appropriately here in this directory. There was one more dilemma yet that I had to resolve which I had noted earlier and uh, had sort of said it was not a big deal, but I decided to go ahead and fix it. Um, the, I had actually noticed this a very long time ago when the player kinematic data was read up from persistent data, um, it did not affect the player's location um, because of the ordering of the calls to uh, store from the data that happened first or sorry uh, on enable happened first which which set the body the rigid body to the kinematic data position that's the way it used to go. And that would happen first, and then the data would get restored, and then this fixed update would come in. Anyways, what I ended up doing was I added this new Boolean into the kinematic data, which says, Kinematic drives next position, and whenever we restore from the data, that's set to true. And here, in fixed update, we see if that's true, then we then we set the body position equal to the kinematic position, and then we set that value back to false, so it only happens for one frame. I imagine I might be able to use that for other things as well. The result of that is uh, whenever the day resets, no matter where the player is at, they'll snap back to where the start of day position is. So here's my start of day position. If I go over here, and I jump up into the air and I press T, I snap back to here at the start of the day because uh, my body is not quantum entangled. So that's the appropriate behavior. So. Those were the those are the two dilemmas that I had to resolve over the past couple of days, um, and then overall I've just been struggling with with the system I've designed so far with all the scriptable objects floating around and trying to figure out how to organize things in directories that make sense to me to know like which data goes to what and. Um, yeah, you can see I've not checked in things for a very long time. Okay, the 82 days ago is not. That was the JSON thing I downloaded. <laughs> but one days ago, that's right. Eight days ago. Ooh. Yeah, some of those might be right. I'm just gonna say check in a lot of stuff. Sorry. So the the way I think I want to organize it is have the script of object data in the directories with the scenes. It's 
kind of the way it makes most sense to me. But it's pretty messy. You can see I've got all these folders over here now. Eh. Um, so, well, long story short, the tech demo is not ready. I'm going to keep working on it into the next week and um, probably just kind of extend this sprint out. Or maybe I'll roll it over to the, make a new sprint, roll it over. I don't know. Did I do that before? Don't think I made like a long sprint anywhere. Yeah. So overall, I think my project is pretty disorganized and it's really showing as I'm like going to make a real, real set of stuff. Um, and I have more things going on in a in a level. Um, it's getting pretty pretty stressful and crazy uh, up in the scene. So I have to come up with some better processes, some better organization, and prioritize those after the tech demo, or maybe just struggle through it. <laughs> because again, it's only a one year project. Uh, I'm basically already a third of the way through the year. So, um, you know, April's almost over. And <clears throat> I've got a lot of work left to do in terms of making the game. It's kind of the th issue. It's like you got to walk before you can run. And maybe it'd be best to set aside some time. It certainly would be. But also, if I'm not enjoying it that much, if I'm not enjoying that kind of stuff all that much, it's better to keep myself motivated to the point where I can actually accomplish something, even if it's not perfect. I can be better next time. This will be the first game that I actually release, hopefully. I want to keep that my main goal, and I want to enjoy it along the way. All right. That's going to be all for tonight. Thanks for, for listening to my update. Um, stay hopeful. It will not take me the rest of the week to complete this tech demo now that I've got these dilemmas out of the way. I can 
push forward and wrap it up and uh, well I've got something pretty big on Tuesday so maybe Wednesday all right thanks and bye